Welcome to my video tutorial on sulci and gyri of cerebrum. Cerebrum has two cerebral hemispheres, right hemisphere and left hemisphere. Both are separated by a deep median longitudinal fissure incompletely. Across this fissure, they are connected through a white matter bundle known as corpus callosum. Before we move on to sulci and gyri, Let's see the gross features of each cerebral hemisphere, which has three poles, three surfaces, three borders, and five lobes. The three poles of each cerebral hemisphere are posteriorly occipital pole, anteriorly frontal pole, below temporal pole. Temporal pole is the sharpest of all the poles. The points which help in determining the side of the cerebral hemisphere are frontal and temporal poles project forward with broad frontal pole lying above and sharp temporal pole lying below in anatomical position which means here is the left cerebral hemisphere. The three surfaces of each cerebral hemisphere are largest superolateral surface on the lateral aspect medial surface on the medial aspect with corpus callosum and inferior surface on the inferior aspect which is further divided into two parts smaller anterior orbital surface and larger posterior tentorial surface by stem of lateral sulcus the three borders are superior border which separates the superolateral surface from medial surface inferomedial border which separates the inferior surface from medial surface, inferolateral border which separates the inferior surface from superolateral surface. All the three borders extend from occipital to frontal poles. The point to be noted here is inferior border shows a slight concavity in front of occipital pole known as preoccipital notch. The five lobes are anterior frontal lobe, middle parietal lobe, posterior occipital lobe and inferior temporal lobe. Between frontal and temporal lobes there lies insular lobe which is also known as hidden cortex of the cerebrum. Now it's time to learn about sulci and gyri of cerebrum. The surface of cerebrum is thrown into foldings because of which it shows depressions and elevations. Depression is known as sulcus whereas the elevation is known as gyrus. We will learn the sulci and gyri according to the surfaces of the cerebral hemispheres. Sulci and gyri on superolateral surface, medial surface and inferior surface. So let's begin. Let's see the sulci and gyri on superolateral surface. There are three sulci on superolateral surface which are prominently visible separating the lobes of cerebral hemisphere. They are central sulcus, posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus. The central sulcus enters onto medial surface by cutting through the superior border behind its midpoint. Whereas parieto occipital sulcus enters onto superolateral surface by cutting through the superior border close to the occipital pole. The point to be understood here is central and parieto occipital sulci can be easily traceable from the superior border onto the superolateral surface. Here is the central sulcus separating frontal and parietal lobes. Here is the parieto occipital sulcus separating parietal and occipital lobes. Here comes the lateral sulcus which begins in the inferior surface of hemisphere in the form of stem of lateral sulcus which enters onto superolateral surface and trifurcates into three rami. They are anterior horizontal ramus, anterior ascending ramus and posterior ramus. The point where it trifurcates is known as sylvian point. Here the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus separates the frontal lobe from temporal lobe. Whereas the temporal lobe is separated from occipital lobe by an imaginary line which extends from preoccipital notch to the junction of posterior ramus of lateral sulcus 
and parieto occipital sulcus here is the central sulcus here is the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and here is the parieto occipital sulcus let's see the other sulci on superior lateral surface lobe wise in frontal lobe in front of central sulcus there lies a vertically running precentral sulcus which lies parallel with the central sulcus perpendicular to the precentral sulcus there are two horizontally running sulci namely superior and inferior frontal sulci the other two rami of lateral sulcus anterior horizontal and anterior ascending rami project into the lower part of frontal lobe coming to the parietal lobe behind the central sulcus there lies a vertically running post central sulcus which lies parallel with the central sulcus rest of the parietal lobe is divided into two parts by a horizontally running intraparietal sulcus in temporal lobe there are two horizontally running sulci parallel with posterior ramus of lateral sulcus they are superior and inferior temporal sulci in occipital lobe a sulcus which enters onto the superior lateral surface by cutting through the occipital pole known as calcarine sulcus most of this sulcus is seen on the medial surface of hemisphere surrounding the calcarine sulcus there lies lunate sulcus rest of the occipital lobe shows a horizontally running short sulcus known as lateral occipital sulcus now let's quickly revise the sulci on superior lateral surface the three sulci which separate the lobes on superior lateral surface are central sulcus posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus sulci on frontal lobe are precentral sulcus superior and inferior frontal sulci anterior horizontal and anterior ascending rami of lateral sulcus the sulci on parietal lobe are postcentral sulcus and intraparietal sulcus sulci on temporal lobe are superior and inferior temporal sulci sulci on occipital lobe are calcarine sulcus lunate sulcus and lateral occipital sulcus the point to be understood here is the curvatures and length of sulci differs individual to individual now let's learn the gyri on superior lateral surface gyri on frontal lobe are precentral gyrus which lies between central and precentral sulci in front of it superior and inferior frontal sulci divide the frontal lobe into superior middle and inferior frontal gyri lower part of inferior frontal gyrus further divided into three gyri by three rami of lateral sulcus they are pars opercularis pars triangularis and pars orbitalis from above downwards rest of the frontal lobe near the frontal pole is known as prefrontal cortex gyri on parietal lobe are postcentral gyrus which lies between central and postcentral sulci rest of the parietal lobe is divided into superior and inferior parietal lobules by intraparietal sulcus the part of parietal lobe surrounding the tip of posterior ramus of lateral sulcus is known as supramarginal gyrus part of parietal lobe surrounding the tip of superior temporal sulcus known as angular gyrus gyri on temporal lobe are superior middle and inferior temporal gyri separated by superior and inferior temporal sulci gyri on occipital lobe are superior and inferior occipital gyri separated by lateral occipital sulcus now let's quickly revise the gyri on superior lateral surface frontal lobe gyri are precentral gyrus superior middle and inferior frontal gyri the gyri between the rami of lateral sulcus are pars opercularis pars triangularis and pars orbitalis most anteriorly prefrontal cortex gyri on parietal lobe are postcentral gyrus superior and inferior parietal lobules supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus
Gyrion temporal lobe are superior, middle and inferior temporal gyri. Gyrion occipital lobe are superior and inferior occipital gyri. Now let's see the gyrion insular lobe. Insular lobe can be approached by retracting frontal and temporal lobes at sylvian point which acts as an entry point into insular lobe known as operculum. Operculum leads into a gap between frontal and temporal lobes known as Lyman insulae. The insular cortex is separated from the rest of the cerebral cortex by a deep circular sulcus. A prominent sulcus on the insular cortex known as central sulcus. Near the insular cortex, the upper surface of temporal lobe shows two or three horizontally lying transverse temporal gyri. Now it's time to learn the sulci and gyri on medial surface. Let's see the sulci on medial surface. A sulcus which runs just above the corpus callosum is known as callosal sulcus. Above the callosal sulcus, the frontal lobe shows a lengthier cingulate sulcus which has a curved tip towards the superior border. It lies close to the termination of central sulcus. Near the orbital surface, frontal lobe shows parolfactory sulcus. Parietal lobe shows horizontally placed subparietal sulcus. Occipital lobe is separated from parietal lobe by parieto-occipital sulcus. The sulcus which enters onto superolateral surface by cutting through the occipital pole is calcarine sulcus which meets the parieto-occipital sulcus at inferomedial border. Let's quickly revise the sulci on medial surface. Callosal sulcus lies just above the corpus callosum and cingulate sulcus is lengthier having a curved tip towards superior border. In front of it is the termination of central sulcus. Near the orbital surface is parolfactory sulcus. On the parietal lobe is the horizontal subparietal sulcus. Parieto-occipital sulcus separating parietal and occipital lobes. On the occipital lobe is the calcarine sulcus which begins on the medial surface and enters onto superolateral surface by cutting through the occipital pole. Let's see the gyri on medial surface. Frontal lobe gyri are cingulate gyrus which lies between callosal and cingulate sulci. Above the cingulate sulcus is the larger medial frontal gyrus. Around the tip of central sulcus, the gyrus known as paracentral lobule. Parolfactory sulcus divides the lower part of frontal lobe into two gyri, paraterminal gyrus and parolfactory gyrus. Subparietal sulcus divides the parietal lobe into two gyri, upper larger precuneus and lower smaller isthmus, which is continuation of cingulate gyrus. Occipital lobe shows a triangular shaped gyrus between parieto occipital and calcarine sulci known as cuneus. The lower part of the occipital lobe shows lingual gyrus which lies below the calcarine sulcus. Let's quickly revise the gyri on medial surface. Frontal lobe gyri are cingulate gyrus, medial frontal gyrus, paracentral lobule, paraterminal gyrus and parolfactory gyrus. Gyri on parietal lobe are precuneus and isthmus. Gyri on occipital lobe are cuneus and lingual gyrus. Now let's learn the sulci and gyri on inferior surface. Let's see the sulci on inferior surface. The inferior surface is divided by stem of lateral sulcus into orbital and tentorial surfaces. Sulci on orbital surface are olfactory sulcus which is occupied by olfactory bulb in front and olfactory tract behind. Rest of the orbital surface shows H-shaped orbital sulcus. The tentorial surface shows lateral longitudinal occipitotemporal sulcus. Medial to that is collateral sulcus. In front of collateral sulcus near the temporal pole lies a short rhinal sulcus. Let's see the gyri on inferior surface. Orbital surface gyri are the gyrus medial to the olfactory sulcus known as gyrus rectus. 
rest of the orbital surface is divided into four gyri by h shaped orbital sulcus they are anterior posterior medial and lateral orbital gyri gyri on tentorial surface are lateral and medial occipitotemporal gyri which are separated by occipitotemporal sulcus the gyrus medial to the collateral sulcus known as parahippocampal gyrus which is continuous in front with uncus which lies medial to the rhinal sulcus that is about the sulci and gyri on different surfaces of cerebral hemispheres thank you for your patient listening keep learning